Ever wondered what Earth would look like if it was split evenly between land and water? I mean like 50% land and 50% ocean. Like a cosmic pizza with just two toppings split equally. First things first, we all know that water is essential for life. That's why scientists search for water on other planets to find potential life. On our own planet, water covers about 71% of its surface, with most of it found in the oceans. What if we took away almost a quarter of that water and replaced it with land? If we did balance out the land to water ratio, we would see some pretty drastic changes. Due to the sea level drop, regions around the north and south poles would dry up completely. Meanwhile, every continent on the planet would expand to reveal an enormous amount of new territory. This would be equivalent to the current surface areas of Asia, Europe, Africa, and North America combined. Imagine all those new vacation spots you could explore with all that land. This shift in the ratio of land and water wouldn't be all sunshine and rainbows, though. With much less water covering the surface, our ocean currents would get messed up, leading to a destabilized climate. This would mean colder temperatures around the poles and even hotter temperatures in the already scorching equatorial regions. Rain levels would drop, creating dangerous droughts and new deserts in many inland areas. Let's not forget about the creatures living on Earth. Plants, animals, and humans would all need to adapt to being less dependent on water. Some animals may even evolve to be smaller or switch to a strictly carnivorous diet due to water scarcity. And sadly, lots of life forms in our current oceans would struggle to survive, which would be a huge bummer for all the fish lovers out there. Let's try to imagine a totally different scenario for our planet next. Back in 1884, the press reported on an astronomer who claimed to have discovered a cubic planet beyond Neptune. We've sure come a long way since then. We've come to know that in our universe, there's no possibility of planets being square, at least based on the information we have today. Let's travel back in time to 4.5 billion years ago when our own planet was just a hot mess of gas and dust. As this chaotic cloud collapsed, a hot star formed and began to attract all nearby matter with its gravitational pull. Eventually, a rotating disk formed around the star, and collisions between particles led to the formation of massive bodies, planets. And because gravity pulls equally from all sides towards the center, planets naturally take a spherical shape. But what if we spice things up and skew the distribution of gravity? Well, if you're feeling adventurous and want to live life on the edge, then welcome to the cube Earth. Yay! We'd have six sides now, but don't get too excited. None of them would be any fun. You'd constantly feel like you're climbing up a steep hill, no matter where you go. That's because gravity is strongest at the center of each face. So the further away you were from the center, the stronger pull you'd feel. Say goodbye to taking standing tall for granted. If you found yourself on the edges of the cube Earth, you'd find no lush and vibrant landscapes. All the water would pool at the center of each face, leaving the edges rocky and barren. And forget about breathing easily, the atmosphere along the edges and corners would be too thin or non-existent to support life. But we'll come back to that later. The climate on the cube Earth would depend on how it would rotate. If it spun on an axis through two faces, then the climate would be similar to what we have on Earth now, but more extreme. The top and bottom faces would be polar, while the other four would enjoy an equatorial climate. However, if the cube Earth rotated through its corners, each side would have a climate with more moderate temperatures and precipitation. Say goodbye to extreme weather, but also wave goodbye to your equatorial paradise. On the bright side, you would probably be able to walk into outer space. Since the atmosphere is held down by gravity, and gravity would now be pulling towards the center of each face, the atmosphere would be thicker there and thinner towards the edges. 
If the cubic Earth had the same volume as our round world today, its sharp corners would poke out beyond our atmosphere, creating unprotected and uninhabitable areas. But who says you wouldn't be able to rent a spacesuit and stand on top of the world and outside of it at the same time? Talk about taking your vacation to new heights. How about if our planet was completely covered with water? Well, it turns out that ancient Earth might have been just that, a water world. According to some researchers, our planet was mostly covered with oceans about 3 billion years ago, with only a few scattered islands popping up here and there. The scientists who made this discovery have been studying rock samples found in Western Australia. By analyzing these rocks, they were able to determine that they formed in a hydrothermal vent system on the seafloor over 3 billion years ago. This information could have some major implications for how we understand the origin and evolution of life. See, scientists still have a lot of questions about where Earth's water came from and when it appeared. But by studying these ancient rocks, they're hoping to get some answers. One way they're doing this is by looking at the oxygen found in the rocks. You see, water with different values of oxygen can tell us a lot about the environment in which it formed. And the researchers found that the rocks from 3 billion years ago had heavier oxygen content than we see in our modern oceans. This suggests that at that time, dry land hadn't emerged yet, which means that Earth was mostly covered in water. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, but it could actually help us understand how life first formed on Earth. If our planet was completely covered with water when the first single-celled organism emerged, then they probably didn't form on land. And if that's the case, it could mean that other water-covered planets might be ideal places to search for life. Our planet may never be fully covered in water ever again. But we might end up losing some, if not all, of our planet's hydration. Here's the deal. The sun is going to get hotter over the next few hundred million years. This isn't anything to do with humans and our shenanigans. It's just a natural thing that happens with all stars. The bad news is that the sun gets hotter, our planet is going to heat up too. And if things get really toasty, we're going to start losing our oceans to evaporation. Sure, we've got plenty of time to hit the beach before that happens. Experts have been working hard on a super fancy computer model to predict exactly when all this is gonna go down. And according to them, we've got around 1 billion years until things get seriously steamy. You might be wondering how they came up with that number. It turns out that when the sun gets hotter, it makes the atmosphere warmer too. And as the atmosphere warms up, more and more water evaporates from the oceans. There's a catch though. Water vapor is actually a greenhouse gas, which means it traps heat and makes things even hotter down there on the surface. As we lose more and more water, we're going to end up in a loop where the planet just keeps getting hotter and hotter until there's no water left at all. But hey, it's not all about us. This research could actually help us find other planets with liquid water. By figuring out what kinds of conditions are needed to keep water on a planet, we might be able to identify some other hospitable worlds out there. And who knows, maybe in a billion years, we'll have colonized one of those planets. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.